Castle Doctrine. It may change when you can use deadly force. How does it do that? If certain triggering criteria are met, it creates a presumption that you are in reasonable fear of imminent death or great bodily harm, or however your state articulates a deadly force law. Bottom line meaning, if certain criteria are met, you are now presumed lawful to use deadly force. But a presumption of lawful use of deadly force does not mean that it's a license to kill. Let's take a look at this video to find out why. Hello everyone, Tom Grieve, former state prosecutor, criminal defense attorney here. Today we're going to be talking about Castle Doctrine, and we're going to be trying to do this really quickly to give you kind of a quick crash course. First, we have to start with a brief recap of deadly force law. Remember, we can only shoot or use deadly force to stop a deadly threat. That's the general gist to this, all right? So what does Castle Doctrine actually do? Castle Doctrine creates a presumption where if certain triggering criteria occur, we can now presume that we are in reasonable fear of imminent death or great bodily harm. So in other words, if something happens, like someone's breaking into my home, my dwelling, we're gonna to get to that, but if someone breaks into my home, I don't have to wait for them to be standing over me with a knife while screaming they're gonna kill me for me to use deadly force. It creates a presumption that if somebody breaks into my home at 2 a.m., I don't have to wait to see some sort of weapon for them to declare a deadly threat or to, so to speak, for them to make the first move. There's a presumption that if you break into my home at 2 a.m., you are a deadly threat and I can use deadly force. Now, when you hear that P word, presumption, there's an R word that follows it, rebuttable. What am I talking about? If that person starts to run away, to retreat, to fall back, we have to let them go. That is rebuttable evidence that they are no longer a deadly threat. So remember, Castle Doctrine, just like Standard Ground or frankly, any of these other self-defense laws, none of these are licensed to kill. These are about shooting to stop the threat or using deadly force to confront deadly force. But here with Castle Doctrine, it gives you an entitlement. It gives you a presumption in your favor if certain criteria are met. Let's take a look at that criteria. Broadly speaking, the criteria here we're talking about is there's some sort of location and then there's some sort of relationship between you and that location. What am I talking about? We start with some common locations, like a dwelling, in other words, a home, an apartment, a condo, something like that. We talk about some sort of automobile, right? Whether that's a car, truck, van, perhaps a motorcycle. And then lastly, some sort of business, whether it's a place that you work at, whether that's a place that you own. But what are these locations specifically? What's your relationship to these locations specifically? Are these gonna be the same in every single state? The answer to all those questions are, it's going to change with place and time. What may count as a Castle Doctrine privileged location in one state or jurisdiction may not count in another jurisdiction. In fact, there's a decent chance that in some jurisdictions, this is going to change. And of course, not every state and jurisdiction even has Castle Doctrine. So you have to check your local listings to figure out what they are. But when you do that, what the heck are you looking for? Well, here's some quick tips. When we're talking about location, are we talking about a home, a car, or business? Frequently, states with Castle Doctrine cover the first two, a home or a car. They may not always cover a business. But what about other locations? What counts as a home, for instance? Does an attached garage count as a home? What about a detached garage? If someone breaks into your detached garage, does that count as your home? Does that apply for Castle Doctrine? What about some sort of outbuilding, like a shed or a barn? What about a common area in an apartment or condo building that you live in, such as a hallway or some sort of lobby entrance, an elevator or stairway? What about campgrounds, tents, campers? What about a hotel where you're staying or a vacation rental by owner where you're staying? What counts as a business? Is this something that if you're on a job site as a construction worker or perhaps as some sort of tradesman, that is basically where you're doing work. But does it count as your business for Castle Doctrine purposes? What about some sort of work share location or something like that? Or are we only talking about some sort of corporate office or headquarters? So there's all sorts of tests when it comes to what's the location that we're talking about. Next, we have the relationship test. What's your relationship to the location? If it's a house or a dwelling, is this yours or are you a guest? If this is an apartment or condo, are you on the lease or are you habitating there, perhaps with a partner or something like that? Is this a friend's location where you're simply crashing for the night? Is this a hotel? 
Again, are, is your name on the lease or on the rental agreement for that night? Same thing for, of course, vacation rental by owners. If this is a car or an automobile, is this yours, a rental? Is this a friend's where are you the driver? Are you the passenger? Are you in the back? What about a ride share, like an Uber or a Lyft? If this is a business, are you the owner? Are you an employee? Are you an executive? Do you have some sort of fiduciary duty to it or not? Are you a frequent guest or a well-known acquaintance of the owner at that location? Keep in mind, the answer for where Castle Doctrine starts is your state's going to draw a line somewhere along these spectrums that we're creating. And if you don't get this right, it can mean you go into prison for the rest of your life. Lastly, what's the triggering criteria for your state? So we've talked about the location, a home for instance. We've talked about your relationship, namely it is your home for instance. But what has to happen next? Generally speaking, they have to have broken into or is in the process of breaking into your home. But what does that even mean when it comes to Castle Doctrine? Does that mean that we need to have broken glass or some sort of broken in door? Or what if somebody opened an unlocked door or window to your home? Does that count? What happens if someone opens your unlocked car door at a stoplight? Is that breaking into? How does any of this apply to someone on a motorcycle or a convertible car or Jeep Wrangler in summer mode without tops or doors? As you can see, this can get really, really gray and complicated really, really quickly. If you check your state statutes, that's of course the law that's written by the legislature and signed into law by the governor, they may not give those exact definitions. And if they don't give them, the question is where are they going to source them from? So for instance, if your state has a particular statute for Castle Doctrine, they may not always define what these words mean in relationship to the statute. You may have to look to an entirely different statute, perhaps somewhere else in your state's criminal code, or sometimes a completely different location to figure out where they're coming from on this. There may not even be an answer. You may also have to, of course, check case law or judge-made law to figure out where exactly do the courts color in these lines. If you're interested in learning more about this, post up scenarios below. I'd be more than happy to see what you come up with, and I'd love to be able to talk through some of the really good ones. Be sure to click thumbs up on this video, like, subscribe, and share. Also, let's start a discussion in the comment section talking about what are some of the questions that you have about Castle Doctrine? What's wrong with your state's Castle Doctrine? If you're familiar with other states, who has the best Castle Doctrine? Who has the worst Castle Doctrine? Again, thank you very much for checking this out. We look forward to seeing you again soon.